130K increase and 3K a month in rent. Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're all well. So I am doing this video from my latest student refurbishment. And I am super excited about this one because this is not only a little bit different to what we normally do, it's also proof in the pudding that there are still great deals out there and why you shouldn't be paying over the odds for these types of properties. In this video, I'm gonna do a little bit of the before and after, some of the journey in terms of the refurb, some of the delays that we had, and then the eventual final valuation and rental figure. But as ever, before we get started, I just need you all to do me a huge favor, and that is to smash the like button and don't forget to hit subscribe. So as you all know, I had nine properties complete just before Christmas, and the 10th one followed not long after that. And the ripple effect of buying so many properties with all of your own money in a short space of time is that they all need refurbishing and turning into something special so you can either sell them or refinance them and rent them. And I've decided not to sell anything and to hold on to them and refinance and rent them out. And this is one of those properties. And what I really liked about this purchase is that in the height of the market back in like October when I was negotiating, this deal. The copycats, the followers, the wannabes and all of the retail investors out there who are trying to buy in the local market, the ex-local authority, three bed semis or mid terraces, start to really ramp up those purchase prices because there just wasn't enough in the market to facilitate the amount of people trying to get on this bandwagon. And we have now seen prices, and I still can't believe this, start to come on the market at 300,000 before anyone has spent a penny on them. That's before any refurbishment, which is just unheard of. I cannot believe people are actually considering paying this sort of money to the properties that I was turning my nose up at 150,000 just a few years ago. Now, I haven't bought too many of these types of deals over the last few years because the price is just too high. I will not ever entertain these ridiculous prices. And what we've seen in the market is a lot of people are starting to do joint ventures. And what happens is that it's not their money, so they're pushing the boundaries on the price. And what will start to happen is you can't refinance the majority or all of that money out and the return starts to really get affected. And I do think the price is being inflated to get up to 300,000 and then spend your refurbishment money on that. There isn't enough meat on the bone. And I think that that is a real good indication that things are going to correct. But enough with the negativity and all of the shit. We're not interested in that. We're interested in the good deals. We're interested in being a savvy, smart property investor, an entrepreneurial property investor, and this deal is no different. So this is actually the most I have paid for a very, very long time. The one I bought just before this in 2020, in the midst of the lockdown, I got for 217,500, and I turned that into a five bed, five ensuite house. Now I had to pay a little bit more for this, I had to pay 230. But remember, this is in a market where they are selling for like 280 plus and now 300. So I still got a really good BMV deal, like up there at like 15, 20% BMV deal. And I was happy to pay that little bit more because I ended up selling the one that I bought for 217. And the price I sold that deal for, 375 was unheard of. I broke all of the ceiling prices again in the local market. And that's happened like three or four times over three or four cycles since like 2015. So I knew that when I came to refinance this, I had a really good comparable, my own comparable, my own property that I sold to demonstrate to the end surveyor that this was worth a little bit more because of the market and the proof in the pudding is in the eating. You cannot deny what has been sold at land registry and the price someone has paid. But how I buy these deals is I am told what the potential value is gonna be at the end of the refurbishment, at the end of my schedule of works that I submit. So I had a good idea that I was on a pretty good run, but it doesn't matter because when it came to the refinance valuation, I got there, up there, close to that 375. 
which means after paying 230 and spending probably the best part of 35 grand, I went a little bit further on this. I put one of my electric heating and boiler hot water systems in that I haven't done for a little while now. I put all new windows and doors in, all new fascias, soffits and gutterings. So I spent that little bit more. And even though the kitchen is a little bit out there and it's a little bit different to my bog standard houses type of stuff, I did spend that little bit more money on the kitchen and the tiles and the tiles and the bathrooms. So let's talk about this refurbishment. So it was in pretty poor condition. The ceiling in the kitchen was falling through from a leak in the old bathroom. Everything had to be gutted, but look, it doesn't matter even if it's in a pretty good condition. It still needs to be gutted because I still need to do what I need to do. There's no point trying to cut corners and recycling old kitchens and bathrooms. You better just to rip everything out and start again and start afresh so you know that you'll have no problems with that property in the future. Now, what was really interesting about this is that as we got through the conveyancing process, I was then marketing my student accommodation houses for the next academic year. And when they all went by the end of October, I started to offer out the properties that were in refurbishment. And by November, they were all gone. So the properties that I was then looking to exchange on and complete on in December, this was one of them. I started to show students around and I had students falling over themselves to take this property, even though it had had no work doing just by showing them one of my other properties and promising them that they didn't have to commit until the property was completely finished. And the deposit's all paid, AST is all signed up, and this property is rented from September for £3,000 per calendar month. 36 k every single year, on top of a 230 purchase price and a 30 35 k refurb and all of the stamp duty and legal costs. And you could argue that that rental income is good even if you paid 280 for the property. But here's the thing, the my money that I put into the deal, I am now gonna get all of it out and a little bit extra because of the increased valuation and the price that I paid. And I see people doing videos, podcasts, Facebook posts, whatever you wanna call it. They are talking about the end value and the end rental income. But the true entrepreneurial, savvy property business investors out there are the ones who will not break their own rules. And I will never pay more than what I paid for this, which is 230. And people are scratching their head. They do not know how I got this deal. I'll tell you how I got this deal. It was on the open market. Anyone could have bought it. Many people tried to gazump me on the deal. But the reality is, it doesn't matter who talks about you behind your back, who writes articles about you on the internet. What's important is the people who you do business with, the people who know you, and the people you work with. And the lady that I worked with, who I bought this from, was no different. I worked with her sets of circumstances. I worked with her desire to delay the process slightly, move furniture, leave some in, whatever it was. And I said to her, I'm a local guy, here's my number, I can be here at a heartbeat if you've ever got any questions. And she actually put the property on with Purple Bricks and they weren't that helpful. The solicitor that they appointed really messed her around. And the person she asked who to, ha to help her was me. And I was more than happy to tr try and steer her on the right direction. And we had a really good collaborative relationship. She was the seller, I was the purchaser. She was more than happy with the price. She probably could have got a, a bit more. I could have maybe squeezed her even harder to get the price down. But what we found was a really happy medium that enabled the deal to complete. And that is what it's all about. And you can see through the process, um, it was a standard gut out and we've now got our five on suites. I love those dark tiles in those small tight spaces for those en suite rooms. A lot of people think lighter rooms for smaller rooms is the best way. I totally disagree. Dark rooms, nice lighting, nice sanitary wear really, really sets it off a tree. And look, what do you think about the kitchen? So I bought this kitchen, it's not Howden's kitchen. I went a little bit more upmarket. The units are much better quality. I love the matte feel and finish of the doors. And then we went for the checkered style floor and just to really put our stamp on it that we will continue to do things a little bit different and test the water. And hey, look, it doesn't always work. It doesn't come off as always the best possible finish, but we had a go, we had a try. I think overall it does work really well with the kitchen. So what does it look like in terms of numbers? So I'm gonna pull probably about 110K, might have some cost to deduct off of that from my refinance. And I put probably the best part of 90K into this deal. So I'm gonna be left with more money than I put into the deal. And after I pay my mortgage on the refinance valuation, 
I'm gonna be left with about two grand per calendar month net cash flow, give or take what the utilities are gonna be, because as we all know, the utility costs are blowing out hot and cold and massively increasing at the moment. So it could be a little bit less, I don't think it will be more than that, but look, I'm more than happy that it's way over my minimum of a thousand pound per calendar month per property benchmark that I try and set myself. This is like doing two deals in one, and the more importantly, I was able to get all my money out. But what do you think? Are you still buying in the local market even though prices are massively increasing? Are you one of the ones paying 250 plus for these ex-local authority houses and then spending probably 60,000 on the refurb and not watching costs where you can really save but still add significant value? Love to hear your thoughts. Leave me a little comment below. But that's it from me. Hope you found the content rich and I'll catch you all on the next video.